You've created a single ladies dance. What was the experience like for you after creating something like that, that immediately blows up? And what was the aftermath in terms of being the actual creator and getting the credit? <laughs> I've gone through every sense of emotion. Here you are, you've created something that you can see on huge motion pictures done on TV shows across the globe in different countries. People are doing it online and getting, receiving funds from the platforms. And here I am, the guy who created it. I'm seeing nothing. I did Britney, two tours for Britney Spears. This is Jaquel Knight. A couple of tours for Beyonce. This is a signed poster from Megan. Uh, Savage Remix. You Ralph definitely Ralph. know his work, even if you don't know his name. Sing the song loud. He's created iconic dance moves for some of your favorite stars. But recently he's been in the headlines for another type of move, a business move and it's changing his industry. July of 2020, last year, it was officially, you know, awarded. I was the official copyright owner of Single Ladies, the choreography. Five, six, seven, it was something we have never seen before in the commercial dance industry. I was technically the first commercial choreographer to ever do it with my work. I think the question that a lot of people have is how exactly does this process work? The copyright office isn't so much worrying about steps as they are looking to allow you to own ownership of a sequence. So when it comes to a sequence, your sequence belongs to you. And once it's done and presented in a tangible form that the copyright office can say the public has access to this, you then have created something that is your IP, your intellectual property that is yours and belongs to you and should always belong to you. Have you gotten that support from these artists you've worked with? I mean, Pharrell is often like, brother, good job, about time. There's so many other key players in the industry that's like, this has been needed forever. I'm happy you're speaking up for yourself. For so long, I've looked up to so many awesome choreographers who've created some really epic pieces before myself. And to know that their works are being done on every single piece of platform and they're not receiving anything, you know, it really hurts my heart. So for me, it was, how do I start putting in the work to build a world that looks after those who love what I do? This act of ownership also highlights a much larger discussion in the intersecting worlds of dance and social media, which is this. Why is it so hard for black creators to get proper recognition for their work? During a Tonight Show appearance in March, TikTok star Addison Rae, who is white, performed viral dances created by mostly black TikTokers, and the backlash was swift. On our last show before break, we did a bit with Addison Ray, where she taught me eight viral TikTok dances. Now we recognize that the creators of those dances deserve to have their own spotlight. Days later, Jimmy Fallon invited many of those dancers to perform their work, while Addison Ray also spoke out to those black creators, telling TMZ that, quote, it's kind of hard to credit during the show, but they all know that I love them so much and I support all of them so much. Hopefully one day we can all meet up and dance together. What does it look like for these black and brown creators when they're not credited? Well, I feel like they're losing a lot of opportunities. Like, like those this, opportunities yeah. for the late night Those shows. would be huge for someone who would have, if they gotten the proper recognition. Janae Stanley and Shanae Abram are professional dancers known as the Nene Twins on social media. They joined TikTok in 2019, but they saw their popularity spike at the beginning of the pandemic after posting this viral dance challenge to Megan Thee Stallion's Savage Remix featuring Beyonce. I went back on the Shade Room and I seen how many like views it has. It's close to like 5 million views on the Shade Room. So that's like crazy. Like many black creators on the app, the Nene twins have also seen some of their past work reposted and co-opted without a tag in sight. Can you sort of describe to me what TikTok is like for a black creator? Uh, it has its good days and, and it, it has, has its bad. bad. <laughs> a lot of black creators are stressed out to the point where they're like, dang, do we, we even want to give this app that type of energy anymore? Do we even want to create? Mm -hmm. And it's because some top creators aren't giving the recognition that 
we think that we deserve, what we know that we deserve. This constant lack of credit paired with a continuous current of cultural appropriation hit a boiling point over the summer and prompted a widespread black TikTok strike from many black users and creators on the app. What did TikTok look like during that time? Um, it look like. Dry. <laughs> In response to this strike, TikTok issued a statement addressing black creators' concerns, noting that, quote, racism and discrimination have no place on TikTok, and we're committed to specific concrete actions in our push to build an inclusive platform reflective of our diverse world. But this issue is bigger than just credit in the form of cultural currency. It's also about financial compensation for black creators. Another celebrity is suing the makers of the popular game. It's the familiar issue we've seen play out before. Alfonso Ribeiro filed a federal lawsuit against Epic Games on Monday. In it, he alleges that the game ripped off the dance his character Carlton Banks was known for. So if you sat right here and you made up 10 eight counts, and that, those 10 eight counts became iconic, now me being Fortnite, I'm going to take your 10 eight counts and I'm going to sell them for $3.99 to a community of billions of people, right? You know, essentially making hundreds of millions of dollars. You have never been a part of that conversation. How has it gotten to this point? What exactly is going on right now with this situation? The law in some ways has not caught up with the reality of what creation now is, what artistic creation is, and how it can be protected. And so um, black creators in, in particular um, are, be, are very frustrated by the fact that they come up with something and other people are making money off of it. When it comes to cases in the social media dance world, David Hecht is an attorney who's represented some big names, like actor Alfonso Ribeiro, Backpack Kid, and Leo Pellegrino and rapper 2 Millie, both who filed past lawsuits against Epic Games the makers of Fortnite. It's really troubling and disheartening to me given the story about Tumili suing Fortnite and Epic Games for this exact issue, you know, which was December 2018. We're talking about three years ago and nothing has changed, right? New platform, new type of infringement, but essentially the same thing. But in all three cases, legal reps for Epic Games made the same argument that, quote, no one can own a dance step. Copyright law is clear that individual dance steps and simple dance routines are not protected by copyright, but rather are building blocks of free expression, which are in the public domain for choreographers, dancers, and the general public to use, perform, and enjoy. Both Ribeiro and Tumili later dropped their lawsuits against Epic Games due to copyright denial by the U.S. Copyright Office, while Pellegrino was also unsuccessful in his lawsuit against the gaming company. America, society have taken from us the land, the culture, the looks, the style, the flavor, the sauce, and we very seldom receive credit. So it's nothing unusual, it's just we're fed up and it's time for change. Now David Hecht is helping Jaquel Knight with his copyright quest, and the choreographer is also taking it a step further with the creation of his own company, Night Choreography and Music Publishing Incorporation. To copyright your work. And in his first order of business, you too can own it and monetize it. Jaquel partnered with Logitech and helped 10 black creators get their own copyright registration for popular TikTok dances they created. Nene Twins, where you at? And the Nene Twins were a pair of those recipients. And we're just so grateful mm -hmm. for him to be able to like work so hard to get that done for us because that was a shock for us. We didn't even know that was possible. It was kind of yeah. like history in the making. He is basically changing the world. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's making a way for us and we definitely appreciate, appreciate that. it. Yeah. So what does this move mean for the rest of the dance industry? outside of the social media space. Six, five, six, seven, you go. Of course I want anything that protects work that you create, work that you put so much effort into, you know, because I, I, I think the general public and the world really takes for granted because they don't understand our creative process, right? But I just think that, you know, when I hear copyright steps, that sounds crazy to me because as a dancer and as a student, a lot of what I built is what I gained from everybody that was around me that I learned from. And they got that from people they learned from. 
For choreographers like Lyric Cruz and this Bounce. group of professional seasoned Bounce. dancers, Bounce. there's Bounce. another divide they've seen play out in this equation between trained dancers versus social media dancers. Some dancers on TikTok are aspiring dancers who can't just make it out here and you need the platform to invest in their abilities. Yeah. So when you have those instances where there's actual dancers on there really like doing it and then get no credit, it's like, wow, I'm just stuck. With Jaquel's initiative, these dancers and choreographers hope the impact is not just recognition, but respect. Everything all inclusive, TikTok, Instagram, and the dance industry, just the level of respect for it just needs to be raised up. Yeah. And I feel like that's what we're both saying on both sides. Mm -hmm. Just even how you can choreograph something and you're labeled as extra crew. It's yeah. just so disrespectful. We're still the lowest yeah. paid people yeah. on the total pool. I'm not upset at my industry. I'm not upset at dance. I'm not upset at being able to create. I just want things to be better. Yeah. I think this is where Joel's initiative like comes into play that he has the platform and the purpose to bring some of us back up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been time. From a trained dancer to a choreographer or content creator, these artists all want the same thing, creative control, credit, and their proper due. Absolutely, we should all be screaming from the mountaintops, hey, that's mine, that's me. Especially when people are making money. So I'm working day and night and creating a world that's protecting the works of not only myself, but the past, present, and future choreographers out there. That's a dream of mine, creating a home where we all can have a piece of the pie and be a part of the conversation and feel like we're represented and have pride and have confidence and know that you can change the world. Thank you.